Hey y'all, it's Beth with Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video isn't a haul video. Instead, it is a requested video for an easy DIY. In my video of my Easter decor, which I'll link right above here, I had on my two farmhouse windows a rag swag. It is really long. Um, it is about a little over six feet and someone requested that I show them how I made it. Now, this was the first time that I'd ever made one of these, but they're really super simple, y'all. So I wanted to show you as I made one for the 4th of July. So I'm going to have to do this in different stages. First, I wanna show you the area that I have to fit. So I'm gonna put a picture right up here. If you see this, this is two farmhouse windows on a wall in my dining room. Now that, span is about six feet, nine inches, six and a half feet. Um, and so it's really long. So my rag swag has to be really long because I do want it to kind of swing like this. And if I can find a picture, I will insert it right here to let you see what it looked like at the end. So I thought it's coming up for the 4th of July, let me make another one. So that's what today's video is. Let's get ready to do an easy DIY, making a 4th of July rag swag. Okay y'all, so I really don't like the angle of this, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing versus be able to see me. So I'm gonna talk you through it, but I wanted to show you what we have. So. Here we go. Okay, y'all, so I have just a wooden table that I paint on and everything like that. So I do have one of the mats that you cut. It has the rulers on all the sides. Um, let's see, what else I also have? I have some fabric scissors. I have a fabric cutter. If you can see, I have a tape measure. Um, the base of it, the base of the rag swag is just this thin like twine or jute rope. It's not very big at all, but it will hold up all of the fabric. So I wanted to have red, white, and blue. So I went and got some fabric quarters um, from Joann's fabric and they happen to be on sale. So they're little fabric squares. It's just enough to do this. They were on sale for 40% off. So I got each one of these for like $1.29. So I got some white. Then I added a print on there and I like this one because it has little bluebirds and flowers on it. I got a textured white. And because I have to do six feet or a little over six feet, I use eight different, eight or nine different colors. Um, I got a red and white check. Then I found this festive one for the 4th of July. I have this red one to add some color. I got this blue, regular blue. Um, and then look how pretty this one is, y'all. And since this had the bluebird in it here, I thought that would be a good match. And then I just got one that tied in these two colors of blue. So again, I have nine pieces of fabric here um, and I'll cut them all out. I may have extras, I don't know yet, but if you were just doing a smaller window, one window, or if you're just doing a small banner across maybe a cupboard, you can actually use cut up cotton clothing. So you could go to the bins, pick up some um, extra large or double extra large shirts, and you could cut them into strips. Um, but because I have such a big area to do, and I'm very picky about my colors and the coordinations and making sure that they have, they follow a pattern, then I just get the fabric squares. I also have a bunch of ribbon. Um, I have this lace that I can add for texture. I had this lace that I could add for texture. My friend Michelle at Newton's Cupboard sent me a whole box full of different kinds of ribbon and trim that she was getting rid of and I never pass up ribbon or trim. So I got some that is maybe just like a satin red. 
It's basically anything that I had. Here's two different kinds of white. You can see that the bottom one has like some eyelets on it. And this one is just a silver. I also had the shiny ones, which I don't know if I'll have enough. If I have like three or four of those, if I can get three or four of those ribbons out of that that's left in the length that I need, I can just use that as filler. So I don't know that I will use all of this, but the ribbon just adds a, little, a bit of texture. So let's get started by first letting you know that I have measured and I cut six feet, nine inches for my jute. I went ahead and cut that and measured that against what I need because again, you're going to do from the corner of the window with a little bit of swag going into the middle window and then you're going to want another little bit of swag and it has to match. I don't want it pulled straight across. Um, now, if you want that, that's fine. You just have to measure and you'll be you'll be fine. It's whatever you want to do. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. I'm just showing you how I do it. All right, so I don't actually wash or even iron this fabric. I basically just take it out of the package and it comes out like this. It's kind of like a rectangle. I fold it short end to short end. So it gives me approximately a 11 inch length on there. Now you'll, it'll turn out to be about eight inches simply because you're gonna tie a knot in that. So what I do is for each one of these fabric pieces, I just kind of match it up and fold it over. Then I put it on my trusty dusty little mat here. It equals 18 inches. So, and these are one inch strips. So I'll get 18 out of these, out of this piece. Okay, again, I may have extras, but that's okay. Um, you can always add it to something else. If you only wanted nine of these because you're doing a short one, it's just whatever you like. I go ahead and cut all of my fabric. So this is a, I believe it's called a Fiskars uh, fabric cutter that does have a protective blade on it up like this the blade is actually protected and you pull it down to open the blade and all you do with this is now you don't have to have one of these mats I use the mat so it doesn't cut my table I don't even have cardboard um, and it's already got the measuring piece on that and so I actually lay it where the fold is towards me and so I just cut strips of one inch. So I'm going to show you how I do a couple of these. It will be speeded up um, and then we will cut to the big pile of fabric that I actually have. And just like that, you have little strips, a whole bunch of little strips in this one fabric. Now, if you noticed, um, I had to go back and cut some of the fabric because I don't typically use enough pressure. Um, that's user error, not anything wrong with the cutter. It's I just don't put enough pressure on there. So um, make sure that when you're using one of these, you can also use scissors. This one is just easier for me. Again, moving to the next piece of fabric, 
folding over to the short side, making sure that it is even. smooth out and it doesn't have to be exact Once you get it all tied in you're not going to see that these are exactly even so you're just going to see that the colors mesh well and there's really great movement so let's get cutting with the plain and if you notice i did a plain i tried to do like a plain red a plain white and a plain blue and then added in some other textures and different colors to that just to give it a little bit of flow this is actually really easy. So it's just about your liking for the colors. Now this fabric is so darling. I just love that with the little bluebirds and the cherries on there. That's going to be so pretty on this thing. So even though the fabric is frayed, it's the end bolt is what that is where the seam is. I think that's going to be perfectly fine because again, when you get all of this ribbon and everything in there, you will not really be concentrating on that. Um, one of the things that I am finding, make sure again that you're using lots of pressure on this thing sure that you hold down the fabric so all the way to the end so that it doesn't move on you. But again, like this one, here's a perfect example. Look how thin that one is. It's not exactly an inch, but at the end of the day, I don't think anybody's gonna be able to pick that out. Again, this is for my home decor. Um, I'm a little bit more careful when I make them to sell in my booths and things, but um, I, this is only my second one that I have done, and both of these have been for my own personal use. So I will say that if I was doing this for uh, product in my business, I would of course be much uh, more careful. But this is just for me and my home, and I'm learning as I go because I wanted to make one, but I honestly um, had never done so. So the first one that I did, which is this Easter one, uh, it was all trial and error. So I'm gonna see if I remember, <laughs> now that it's July, um, how I made that. I think back in March is when I made that, but you can see what it looks like in the Easter video that I put the iCard in for. So this, I just love this fabric. It'd be great on like a painted little, maybe like a blue chair with this as the cushion. Oh, that would be so pretty. All right, on to the next piece. All right, so here is our last piece of fabric. Open it up, go to the short side. Thought I would choose this one. It's, it's really fun, little piece love and fireworks. That would be pretty to tie it all together as the 4th of July. Just like that, we are done. So let's see what kind of fabrics we have. Um, we'll start with the red. There's this, we'll probably do this. I put it in the colors um, that I wanna put it in. So red, white, and I'll add a blue and then a red. A 
bite and a blue, then a red, a white, and a blue. So once you put it in like this, you can kind of see. So if you look right here, it kind of looks dull right here and really busy down here. So I may switch this and this. So what I do is I play around to see, you know, where, where everything is. Um, I've got some busy and then I break it up, like making sure that there are some plain things in between there. Um, and I may play with it a little bit more before I start tying it off just to make sure that um, I get the look that I want. What do you think? So I'm going to go ahead and open up this red trim here because I just want to, one, see how much is in there um, because you will need, like, each one of these strips is, let me measure it, is like 21 inches. So you will need, like, 21 inches of this red strip. Now, you may only get two or three um, pieces like that. And let me do 21 inches. Now again, if you don't have this little roller thing, you can always just use scissors, but I don't know how many, even if I get three or four, I usually do them in sections. So even if I get three or four of these, it just adds a little bit of texture to the cotton stripes, but it looks like I'm gonna get several, that'll be good. Probably about four, maybe five, that'll be great. And if you've ever watched any of my crafting videos or DIY videos where I paint, I always say I'm a messy painter, but I'm also a messy crafter. <laughs> and I'll clean up as I get done. So I do have a little bit of extra there, which I can save for package toppers, y'all two, three, four, five. So I actually got five of those. I like the eyelet lace here. And I already had it open. So, and it matches, it's about one inch. Each one of the strips is an inch wide. So that kind of goes with it. So I'm gonna cut a few of those as well, just to have ready. Cause the, you know, if you make it fuller, it just looks better. And if you have extras, you can always make one for another area or make one for a gift. So this one is extra. Of that one, I got one, two, three, four. So I only got four out of that. Okay, y'all, I've got some ribbon to add texture. I've got the material to add the rag swag. The only thing left is to start tying it off. So let's get on with the tying. Okay, y'all. We're back. Um, I had to run some errands, get my nails done, you know, the important things in life. And now that we have everything laid out, we're going to start tying. Um, this is a longer process. Usually I do it sitting on the couch watching television, but I wanted you to see the process. Um, these are smaller strips. You could make your strips bigger if you wanted to, but I do the smaller strips so that it would be fuller. Um, and so we're gonna start tying. So let me show you where to get started. So I do it in this order of fabric, if you can see. And again, I'm just weird like that. I'm going to leave some string at the edge, enough to, I usually do a little loop like this, tie a knot. So I tied a knot and then I tied another knot and I made it tight. This is what the nail or what I use is just a thumbtack in the soft wood of my uh, farmhouse windows and I hook it on to that. So I make this super, super tight. Just keep pulling it. And I also do that at the other end as well. We've got two ends. 
Starting very close to the knot, I will take my piece of fabric. Remember, we cut it like this. This is the folded piece. I am going to slip it under. I'm gonna slip it under and then just, there's a the open spot. Here, let me show you like this. So I slipped it under. There's the open piece and I'm just gonna pull it through. So put it through and pull. So it kind of looks like a bow tie. Okay, and you're honestly just going to go straight down like I'm gonna get the next one. And I feed it under closest to me. So the edge, it'll be backwards. So the, the folded edge goes under and the open ends come over and you put those in, you thread it through and then you just pull. And I pull pretty tight and then I just slide it down beside there. And if you can see, this is gonna be a lot of tying. And that's why I usually do it like while I'm sitting in front of the television with nothing else to do, <laughs> uh, multitasking if you will. Now you don't have to tie it super tight. So see how this one is bigger? I, I can leave them like that too. Um, they are easier to slide, but towards the ends, I like them super tight so they don't slide off, but I will leave them looser with the bigger bow tie, as I call it, knot. Going to the next piece, under, open it up, and pull it through. To make the bow tie, slide it down. So you do want them to kind of be tight together. And as you get more of them, you will be able to slide it, um, especially when you get to the end. So I hope that y'all are able to see that you, it's just like making a bow tie. It's no special, nothing special. Um, so let me show you what happened here. So see when it gets like this, that just means that your pieces separate. I wanna keep the pieces together as much as possible so that it doesn't, it's really a lot more simple than this is making it out to be, but, and you just tie and pull. That's it, tie and pull, loop, tie and pull. And it, to me, it looks just like a bow tie, which I never knew how to tie a bow tie, but. All right, so this is, and I do it in the same pattern over and over. So I do all of these colors, like I put all of those colors out. So I do all nine of these and then I start back over so that it, it really does make like a pattern. Then um, if you leave it a little less taut, a little looser, then you will be able to go in and if there's some gaps, you can fill it in with your ribbons and things like that. And you can add whatever you want to a rag swag. This is just how I'm doing it for the purposes of my display. So this is the last piece of the nine pieces. I think it's nine, three, six, nine, yeah. The nine pieces. So this is the first row. See, there's gaps right here. You can just slide it over. There you go. And the tighter it is, the harder it's gonna be to slide, but you'll fix that as you go along. And now I literally will just start back over and go keep going.
Okay, I just wanted to check in. We've gotten this much done so far. You see the gaps in between there? We have about, it looks like it's about half of the string, but once we start moving these down, once we start getting these a little bit closer to each other, you will see that it really, we're not as far as we think we are. Now it does not take a long time to do this. Um, it's just repetitive. So if, if it's pretty calming to me actually to sit and do it. So if you look, we've really only done this much and that's not even being completely taunt. Um, so we need to flip some ribbon, um, but yeah. So this will actually be the front because you really want to turn it around. But I love the shimmer in that. So I am going to keep going, y'all. I've got a lot more ribbon and I've got, I mean, I have a lot more fabric and a lot more twine to do. So I'm going to keep going, making my knots, doing my slide under the loop part under, keeping the ends together. Oh, the other thing is make sure if you have printed fabric, see it's duller, more dull on the back, go ahead and make sure that you always have it on the right side. So loop side under the twine, ends together, two ends through the loop and pull and move it down. So let's keep going. Okay, let's check back in. Here's where we started and we pushed it down. We've gone about three quarters of the way, but of course we will need to bring them all down a little bit. And just keep sliding them. And let's see, I think I'm about halfway through the fabric. I was gonna do a count to see, cause I think we said we had 18. So this is how it's looking so far, y'all. What you think? I got to add a few things to it, but I love the, the shimmer of that. Let's see, it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes. So I'm halfway through the fabric, um, which means that I'll just, you know, keep moving it down and keep moving it down. Um, and I may have a little extra fabric left over, um, but I also wanna make sure that it's close enough and tight enough so that it gives it this really full effect like the other one did. Um, and I just love these. They're very simple. It's simple to make. I think that when we add some of the ribbon to this, that'll give it a little bit more um, texture and stuff. So let's keep going because we've got about this much more of the twine to do. And let's see how far we get.
Okay, so let me show you that just as a couple of tips. When you keep your um, ends together, when it gets this long and it starts hanging off the table, one of the things that I do is I go ahead and open and pull through. Hold your ends together. I You saw me probably doing this in the speed sped up version, but I usually just will put my arm on the actual swag and pull. Uh, pull with this hand and pull down with this, but this elbow helps me to keep it straight. I mean, you just kind of have to use the pieces that you have. So this is where we are now. We have a little bit more to go. So I'm gonna keep on keeping on y'all. Okay, so we have gotten to the end and I have not one left of every piece, but that is okay. Sometimes that happens, either I grab the wrong piece or um, it, I just didn't get 18 out of each. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off. I have a little bit of extra twine on here um, just because I can space it out a little bit if I want to once I get it up onto the wall or I can add some more like yarn and ribbon and stuff like that. So. I will be spreading it out to add in the, the ribbon pieces that I have in between the fabric. Um, so I'm just going to use what I have. I did end up using all of the fabric, but again, I am making one that is over six feet. So um, yeah, you may not need to make one uh, that is that big. So you can remember, you can also use torn up like extra large men's shirts. That's a good one to use where you just use, especially like if you can get a 2X, 3X or bigger, uh, maybe from the bins or something like that, or on clearance at Goodwill where they have their sales and stuff. Um, like, per, like on a Monday in my Goodwill, we have 75% off of the color. Um, that would be a good time to get it. If I was doing just a small one, I probably wouldn't need 18 strips of this. So I have an extra white one. Um, I'm going to go down to the other end and just add a white one. Well, first before I have two white pieces left, one textured and one empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it. Let's see what, where we are. Here is the swag before we add any ribbon or anything like that to it. So I'm just looking to see if I can spread some of these out a little bit if I need to. Um, it just kind of depends on how they lay. Some of them might be right up against each other and some of them will be hidden. So I may need to spread it out just a tad. So I'm gonna save those two pieces until I can spread it out. So now I'm gonna go back and just kind of give it a little bit of space and add in some ribbons. I'll probably add in some of this and some of this. So let me get it situated and spread out a little bit and then I will show you how I go back in and add the ribbons and stuff like that. But overall, it's pretty cute, yeah. Well, well, y'all, look what I found on the floor. Two pieces of the fabric that I was missing. So, I guess it fell off. We will need to go back to the end <laughs> and see the pattern is the red, the white, the blue, then we have, so I'm gonna have to change it and see, you just can untie. If you don't like it or if it is, you missed a piece or you um, something happens to it, you can simply untie it. It becomes frayed, which is fine because that's the purpose of the rag in the swag. So um, I am going to redo and add these pieces back like they were. So I guess I did get nine pieces out of everything. It looks that way anyway. But then there's that. And let's see what came after that. Then this piece, I'm sure I missed several pieces going into this. 
but I found all my pieces, so that makes me feel better. I thought maybe I just couldn't count, or which is not a far possibility, but I did find all of the pieces, so red, white, and blue. Here we go, we got them all. I do have one piece of this white left, um, and again, that's fine. I think I may have, no, I can add it down here to this piece. I'm sure it's missing somewhere in here. And I did find the spot where the white was missing, so it all worked out. Just have to look at, that's another reason that I use to keep the pattern the same. So if I mess up, I can actually fix it myself. So I found some different kind of blue ribbon. I didn't find any of the sparkle that I like, but I found this. So I'm thinking about using that in here just to add a little bit of sheen. I'm gonna add five of these, five of these, and then I'll cut five of these and then we will add that. I considered using this, but I haven't, I think there's, it's too, I don't know, what do you think? I think that that means there's gonna be, yeah, see when I put that with this, it looks a little too modern for this. Let me see how I would like it. Oh, I don't know. It does give a little bit of glitter. Let's add a piece of this and see what we actually think. So if we do it, we did it under. And again, you can always change it, but you can just play around with what we like and you can spread those out so that it will will rest on top of there. But I do want to pull it so that it stays. All right, so what do you think if we add just a touch of glitter? I don't think it's too bad, y'all. I think it fits right in and adds, it adds something. So I think I'll add five of those pieces of the glitter and then we will just tie them throughout the piece. Okay, it is time to add the ribbon. I'm gonna start with a little bit of sparkle on the very end. Again, I'm just doing the same thing that I did with the fabric. This is just ribbon. All right. So I think I'll just kind of look and eyeball it as to where I want a piece of sparkle and I'll just put it in there. No right way. You can do it any way you want, whatever fits your desire. I'm just gonna pull it and add it to the mix. Now, once you get it hung, you will, um, once you get it hung, you will want to like play with it a little bit and spread it out. And I will, we'll, we'll look at that once I get it hung up there. Okay, so the camera got moved. You know why? Because we were supposed to go to church tonight. <laughs> And I totally lost track of time with everything that I was doing today. So, totally my fault, my responsibility, but I got caught up in crafting. Does that happen to anybody else or just me? So let's talk about it. Leave me a comment below if you lose track of time when you are crafting or thrifting or baking or watching YouTube leave me a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. 
if you know of anyone else who loves easy DIYs and um, thrifting and all that comes with that, make sure that you share this video with them as well. So let's get on with putting the last little bits of this on and then we will hang this thing. All right, here we go. And here's the finished product, y'all. What do you think? I absolutely love it. I think it's gonna make a beautiful addition to my 4th of July decor. So stay tuned for that video at the beginning of July. I love the way that it has a little bit of swag and I love the color. So thanks so much for watching. And as always, y'all stay pretty and be sweet. Bye-bye.